In light of it being the 20th anniversary of the tragic Lockheed Martin mass shooting, this week's Frontline Responders is a little different. Tonight, we bring you the story of a frontline survivor. Brad Bynum was just 26 years old on July 8, 2003. He went to work at Lockheed that day and his life was changed forever. News 11's Kara Shirley sat down with him in an exclusive interview as he shares his story. 20 years later. July 8, 2003 was just another Tuesday for Brad Bynum, an employee of Lockheed Martin in Meridian, Mississippi. You know, get up, get ready, go to work. You know, no idea that life's going to change. Many lives would be changed that day when a co-worker, Doug Williams, would go on a rampage that would become the deadliest mass shooting in the U.S. in more than two years. On this day, Brad and many of his co-workers had to attend a mandatory ethics meeting. When the meeting started, he was not in the room. And we were sitting at a set of tables shaped like a horseshoe with a podium in the center at the front of the room. Um, and I was sitting dead center of the horseshoe. Brad wasn't really familiar with Williams outside of seeing him on a few smoke breaks and said he entered the room normally. Then Williams left within a few minutes. You know, gets up and walks out. Just in and out within five minutes maybe. When he come back in, uh, all you hear is the shotgun. And the words out of his mouth were, y'all won't F with me no more. And boom. Everybody just kind of tries to hit the floor and scramble. Um, at some point, he he walks out of the out of the room. Those not wounded attempted to block the doors with tables, but before they could, Williams came back into the room. I guess he reloaded and come back in and unloaded again. That's when when myself I was shot. He unloaded, turned around and left, walked back out. Of the 14 people killed or wounded, nine of them were from the meeting. Brad taking buckshot to the back from the shotgun blast. It's total chaos. Um, several of us have been severely injured. You know, you've got others that's trying to help help those of us that have been injured. You've got some over blocking the door so they can't get back in. Um, nothing can prepare you for it. Uh, I've been through, you know, basic training AIT with military and you know you're trained for this stuff but until it's right there and it's there is no there's no training for it you know you're, you can't be prepared for it. Brad's injuries consisted of grazes to his upper shoulder, two shots that went into the strap under his shoulder blade, and one shot that was next to his spine. Doctors removed the shot in his shoulder blade but left the one in his spine and his recovery was fraught with complications. The one that was on my spine, when I'd lay down on my back, it, it would roll over on my spine and paralyze me to the waist down. So we eventually had to go in and surgically remove it. After his recovery, and despite what Brad witnessed that day, he did eventually return to work at Lockheed Martin. You know, after something like that, it's, it's hard to go back. You know, it's hard to walk through the doors when you, you know, you walk back and you see day in and day out, you relive it every day. So I worked back through January. It was the week before, week before Amber was born. Amber, Brad's daughter who was born in the aftermath of this tragic event, who grew up with a father learning to heal from an event that no one should ever experience. 20 years of healing. The first five were, were, were bad. Being a man, you know, we always macho and don't need no help. And after losing everything and everybody that's pretty much close to me. Um, by the time I realize you do need help, then it's too late. God pull, helped pull me out of that black hole. You know, good Lord's blessed, blessed me with a good family and, you know, somebody's got my back, you know, so life is good at the moment, you know, but it's not always, you know, there's always those days that are better than others. But. Mass shootings are becoming common in our country, and for Brad, they remind him of 2003. My heart just goes out to those, you know, that's, that's involved because they don't have a clue. You know, don't know what's coming or what could be coming or what was coming. You know, and we got to continue to come together, whether it's tragedy or not, as a community to help people and do things to stand by, beside each other. It's, it seems like it's something that's long dead and gone, but 
we've got to get back to that. For frontline responders, Kara Shirley, WTOK News 11. Brad would also like to tell those struggling with any issues to stay strong, reach out to God, and don't be afraid to get counseling. To see the full exclusive interview with Brad, visit our website at WTOK.